It has made contact and will stop at nothing. You've got to fight it head on. They're back! What's your favorite scary movie? It's <laughs> one of this. And we're back! Another episode of the Arrow in the Head show. I'm Lance, of course. You are John. How you been, buddy? Long time no see. I, I know I always say it's a long time, but it's always been a week. But it's you know. a week, dude. <laughs> but still, that's seven days. That's that's 24 hours a day, man. That's a long time. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going to be time. tomorrow. I'm still here. You're still here. I see we both have uh, different settings. I decided that it's a nice summer in Maine and I should be outside. So here I am. What about you? You don't uh, look like you're outside. You look like you're inside. No, I'm inside. I'm in Beverly Hills. I'm uh, oh, okay. attending uh, Content LA for Joblo Media. And uh, that starts tomorrow. So Beverly Hills kicking it here. And, uh, you know, that's it. Let's jump into the main part of the story, which is drinks. What are you drinking, buddy? Uh, just water. I'm still sober. I respect that. Uh, just for now. Just for now. Almost mm -hmm. done. What are we now? 17? I still got 10 days. Yeah. So okay. there you have it. Right. What about oh, you? You're, uh, you're sticking to your guns. All right. Well, I just polished off. Uh, I got this a little while oh, back. Holy shit. Uh, I mean, not the whole thing. It was it was only like a quarter left. City Gate. It's tropical rum. I had a little Red Bull left, so I mixed that together to give me a little bit of a boost. So it's uh, just a little bit of rum and Red Bull. And it's dark rum, though, right? No, this is actually clear rum. Okay. So the color okay. you're seeing is Good. from the actual okay, Red Bull. Okay, from the Red Bull. Okay, no, cool, cool. Awesome, brother. Well, look, man. I I, I actually have no idea where this show's going to go. Because I have no idea how you feel about this movie. Like, usually you and I, you know, we talk shit a little bit before the show, you know, or about the movies we're going to address. I have no idea. So it'll be interesting because I have no idea. So cheers okay. to that. Cheers to all of you. Thank you cheers. for showing up. Hello, my friend. Poltergeist 2, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sequel to the legendary Toby Hooper directed Poltergeist. Of course, produced by Steven Spielberg. You know, this is, has got quite a bit of following, I think, later in its life. I don't really know how it was perceived when it was released. It was not perceived very well uh, that's when, it, when it got released. But, 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 you know, you just said it. <laughs> Poltergeist. Poltergeist is one of the best fucking horror movies ever made. It doesn't matter what if your sequel would have been this, that, that, that doesn't fucking matter. There's no fucking way you're going to live up to it. There's no way. But that's not to say that the film has no merits. And personally, it's a nostalgic favorite of mine because I have my personal uh, experiences to it. I remember when it came out. And it, first of all, I remember when I saw the teaser trailer, you know, with the phone, you know, they're back. I remember that. Oh, well, fuck yeah. And it was I, I'm pretty sure it was around the same time Karate Kid 2 came out. Around the same time, you were still yeah. in, the, in in your mom's vagina, but I was I, I, not. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't know I, the, uh, the dates. I was out of the fucking vagina, all right. And yeah, I remember good. Good. Poltergeist two came out, and me and my brother got on our fucking BMX bikes and rode all the way to the mall to go to the theaters and see the movie. Sat down, watched the movie. I enjoyed the movie when oh, I was a so kid. Not as a kid, okay. But I remember the whole that whole shtick, you know, getting my BMX and you know, just like the Goonies. Yeah, or yeah. well, that's what we did it as we're kids. We rode yeah. bikes everywhere. I, I did the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I have that nostalgia veil attached to it. But with that said, even without the nostalgia veil, there's a lot of merit to the movie. First of all, like we we've already said three times, so I'll make it four times. No fucking way this is ever going to was ever going to live up to the OG. But it has a couple of key scenes that are very superior to your average horror movie, in my opinion. Like the possession scene. What is the end? His holy temple. When, you know, the, the Craig T. Nelson, you know, the tequila bottle, he gets yeah, the, the, the mezcal war man. Yeah. Then he like, you know, quasi almost tries to rape his wife because he's possessed. And then finally he fucking vomits this little fucking thing. And then it grows to a big thing. And then like it's, it's a dude with no no legs and no arms playing that the thing. He, that he was the actor doing it for a bit. It's really unnerving, man. It's really disturbing. The whole I, I, the whole I bit. Yeah, I wouldn't the whole bit. Yeah. And the same thing with uh the scene with the braces. Yeah, I don't like to see I, that's actually one of my negatives. 
Surprisingly not. What a dick. Really, dude? What's your it problem, is. man? You whining shirt wearing motherfucker. What's your problem? I the, the brace is a good example of where I, I think intent was there, but I don't think execution. I think that sounds cool, but to me, it, it always came off kind of lame. Now, I don't have any nostalgia for this movie. Uh, it's funny. I remember renting the first one as a little kid, and my dad was like, oh, the second one's not good. So I just, I didn't, I didn't see it till I don't know, later in life. So I'll, I'll say this about Poltergeist. Poltergeist 2, I have the same thing as you. I don't remember if you remember this in our Demons episode, but you told me how you always jump back and forth in Demons 2 throughout your life. And I, I've, yeah. that's kind of stuck with me because I think I've done the same, but I've never kind of categorized it in that way. I always just think, oh, maybe I was in a weird mood this time or I was in a good mood this time. But, you know, as you grow and change and evolve in life, you know, your tastes uh, yeah. take the journey along with you. And, and so some things alter. And so Poltergeist is one I, I don't I've never disliked, but I go from liking it to like kind of liking it every time I see it. Because I think you're absolutely right, though. I think this is, has a big shadow over it. And it's you got to separate that. And it's, it's, yeah. It is hard. You got to take it. Take it as its own film. On its own, on its own, yeah. But with that being said, what I like and dislike equally about this is that it fully leans into being a continuation. This isn't yeah. a sequel. It's like, well, it kind of happened. No, no. The ramifications of the first are what build this entire story. And I like that because it's like fucking lean in, man. There's no cowardice. This has confidence. I don't I don't think it, it hits a lot personally, but I respect the fact that it, it basically is like, no, no, no. We're going to world build now. We're going to expand. It's not the headstones and the bodies anymore. It's actually this fucking cult guy to her. And, and then you, yeah. you deal with, you know, again, sometimes good, sometimes bad. You deal with the the freelings and and what happens if you live through the, the first movie. Insurance, fucking money problems, yeah. stress. He grows his hair out. He's kind of yeah. a hippie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a fucking subplot about the... Yeah, the, the mother, grandma, and uh, Carol Ann. Everybody's psychics. Psychic. Everybody's psychic suddenly. Everybody's psychic. <laughs> so, but hey, I'll run. I'll run with it. I'll run. I with mean, it. I, I. But that's what I'm saying. So, is that I don't always love this movie, and because I, I think a lot of that's a little silly for me personally. Huh. But I also, I'm like, man, fucking a. Like I, the, this kind of stuff, I like it when it gets made though, because there is no sense of maybe we should hold back or. Or, you know, kind of mimic this. Because I would say what this leans into uh, really well, and again, something that doesn't always work, but I respect it, is that this is actually more fantasy. Like, okay, yeah. the poltergeist and the whores in the first one, but we can't do that again. So why don't we expand the mythology and make this a, a more fantasy whore, more of a uh, an adventure of, of Native American magic and, and shamans and shit. And I was like, okay, see, you see, know what? See, you, just, you just said that said what native american that character yeah was sam am or no oh, taylor i'm awesome. sorry sam taylor, taylor. taylor yes yeah taylor was amazing the banter between him and craig t nelson uh especially with the car you know car, car's angry yeah <laughs> it's fucking amazing it's funny as fuck dude it is funny as fuck i like uh will samson you know? i like that taylor's a good character yeah. i i would say i i guess i'm just gonna keep saying the same thing okay i like tim i like the actor i like the idea I think that's cool. It's an interesting way to go about it because this is where it becomes like fantasy, where it's like, no, yeah. we're going to take the horn, we're going to follow this character. And I, I think his 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 cadence was great, his sort of yeah. sense of like, and you know, he passed. Hey, but what he is passed. it, man? Yeah. I heard he's part of the part of the curse, which the curse, just, yeah, yeah, but basically just life. I don't know, dude. I I don't. I, don't I, I don't think know, it's bro. just just no, bad man. luck, man. No, coincidence. Man. You, you know, I don't know if you uh, guys and dolls, sorry, I'm just going to do a bit of an aside because I found this out fairly recently. I knew in the first Poltergeist, they use real corpses Yeah. in the pool they're, scene. They're more, yeah? they're more of uh, more affordable than making fake ones. Exactly. But they did the same thing in part two. And at some point, they did the day of shooting and the negatives, uh, well, the negative, the film, the film stock came out black, full black. So they're like, OK, maybe we shouldn't have used real bodies. And they ask uh, Taylor, that's his name, right? The uh, Native American gentleman? Yes. Yeah, Will they, they asked him because he was a shaman for real. So they asked him to exercise the set because they're like, yeah, no, dude. So why are you using real bodies? I would use real bodies right now. I would not. To line my backyard for Halloween if I had the money. You're a dick. Yes. You're a dick. <laughs> You're yes. such a dick. But anyways, um, I believe in a poltergeist curse. Julian Beck had... Um, Stomach cancer. Stomach cancer. Taylor, I forgot the actor's name. I apologize. Will Sampson. 
but he he passed from what was it it was something uh weird like totally like i, I don't, don't remember i just remember he, uh, he passed he's a part of the he's a part of it him and back Dom, dominic dunn from the first one got whacked by her psycho boyfriend, boyfriend? after yeah, the movie that's... premiered uh which actually pissed me off i don't know if you know this but in the script of poltergeist 2 they actually reference her character and say she's off the college off the college right? yeah, yeah the college but they cut it out of the movie yeah they should have left it in because i actually yeah. Thought it was in there, and then yeah, on this, this last rewatch, I'm like, oh, they did. I just assumed at the beginning when they're outside at the grandma's house, they mentioned it, but they didn't. I was like, okay, interesting. Yeah, actually, the movie got cut a lot. Actually, in in the, the studio, really uh, did a scissor job on it. It's 91 minutes, dude. It was a good 20, 25 minutes uh, extra initially, and and I think it's actually a good thing from what I can remember of what they cut. It was a lot of the fantasy elements, and for me, that's. Pretty much the thing that bothered me the most about the movie is the fantasy stuff. Like the ending, the last, whatever, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, when they're and on the other side and the yeah. lance and all. And I'm like, eh. No, no, the other side, it, it's, that's bad. I'm just that going to say it, that's bad. But and it's gra also, grandma comes. You know, I mean, the grandma stuff yeah. was lame to be. Remember, she possesses that sort of like uh, real yeah, yeah, the way chick. And yeah, she yeah, comes yeah. up with the fucking little curls and it's like, You've got to fight it head on. Stay together. Ah. Again, maybe on paper it sounds good, but in execution, it's like, yeah, they should it's be like, funny. okay. It's cheesy. It's cheesy. <laughs> and, and and that's the really the fascinating thing about the movie where it, it jumps from really good shit to really cheesy shit. Back and forth, back and yeah. forth, back and forth. I mean, we haven't spoken about Revan Kane played by Julian Beck, but really at the end of the day, he's the main reason to see the fucking movie. This uh, dude freaked the night of the living shit out of me when I was a kid when I first saw this fucking thing. He freaked me to fuck when he has his tete -a tete with Craig T. Nelson. You know, let me in. Oh, I'm happy your family's not here. Because I believe you have a problem here. You know, you're in danger. You're being yeah. What he that whole bit? I'm like, wow. That's, that's great. Well, that's that's the scene. Wow. That's the scene in the entire movie. Hold on, I wrote down by like it's such a random line, but I love how he like spoke it. It's when uh, he's walking up and the mom's like. Hey, have, I, have I seen you before? He goes, that is possible. I get around. I love getting around. Just fuck it out. <laughs> like that alone. He, he could have just like turned around then. I'd be like, get the gun, get the car. You know, I love yeah. getting around. I was like, fucking <laughs> shoot him. Shoot him twice. <laughs> no, dude, he's, he's the reason. I And uh, I don't love the mythology expansion. I respect it. I don't love it. But I can't. I can't sit here in good faith and say, you know what? Reverend Kane as the sort of I call him like a, a tent preacher. It's like style. I, I, he might have been way before. That obviously, that was a thing. Cause, cause I don't know when the fuck his time was. His sort of retconning of the mythology being like the main baddie, I think is awesome in its own thing. I think he's a cool, yeah. creepy dude. I'd like, he's in the, the cave. He's all sweaty and they're all crying. And, he, and he, yeah. I don't know what saying. I'm just going to make up some. Yeah, like, like, we're going to be ah! good. We're going to be good. Yeah, it's his teeth. It's like, okay, yeah, no. Dude. That's in, 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 a, in a bubble. He's amazing i mean it, it sucks because it, it does negate you know you move the headstones but you love the bodies it negates yeah. an awesome line but i'm willing to forgive it because julian beck in a small role becomes so iconic that when you think of poltergeist 2 you think of him in his what eight minutes of screen time maybe maybe even less yeah god it is <laughs> a holy tempo <laughs> let, uh, me in. let me in let me in <laughs> Yeah, no, Julian Beck, uh, basically he elevates the movie. He totally elevates. And you said the word iconic, and I totally agree with that because I'll always remember that villain. I'll, you yes. know, it's, it's almost, I want to be uh, talking on my ass, but it's almost Freddy Krueger, Reverend Kane. You know, Freddy Krueger had like, you know, eight movies or whatever the fuck, but Reverend Kane with one movie, because in, in part three, you know, they took a dude, they... they gave him makeup and try to make him look like a Julian Beck, but it, it didn't work. It didn't work to, for me anyways, personally, it didn't work. But that, that movie's a whole other ball game. That what yeah. a shit show that was. No one spoke. But the character, the character. Well, I'd love yeah. to talk about Pulse Guys 3 because I have a weird relationship with that being that. I, I have a complete utter fascination with Pulse Guys 3, but we'll keep it for our Pulse Guys 3 episode, which but will Kane still was the bad guy. So they were smart yeah. at the least. I, and again, not, we're going to, I'm not going to give my opinion, but you're right though. They're smart to see this and be like, oh, he's the bad guy of the series. No, now he is. Yeah, after yeah, two. And, yeah, and, it and again, changing what it came before, but he's so iconic and so good. 
that in a small role, you're right. I mean, he's on the cover of the Shout Factory. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, the, the Blu-ray, yeah. And he's not in a lot in, in that little time. I think that's what I'm impressed with is because it's such a small performance and he, he basically steals the entire movie. Because you're right, we I remember him from it, but he's only in it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but that's how powerful this performance uh, was. And actually, while he was shooting, he had, as we uh, stipulated before, uh, stomach cancer. And he, like, died. I'm pretty sure he died during the shoot. Like, they didn't finish the shoot. I think he was done his days, I think. I'm talking out of my ass, by the way. So I okay. might be wrong. But I think he was done shooting, but the shoot was still continuing. But then he passed. And I know they hired another actor. I think his name was Corey something to do uh, ADR. A couple lines because he was in oh. around. Yeah, he was in around. I, for I didn't know it was that bad. Well, that's sad. Yeah. But... It, it, it's a legacy. It's a legacy role. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Other great things. The family chemistry. Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson, Rob, uh, Robbie. I don't know his real name, the kid. You know, Heather O'Rourke, obviously. Yeah, Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah, yeah. Who actually also had a lot of her scenes cut out of the movie. She was actually really pissed off when it came out. Because... Oh, I see. I didn't know that. I, I, yeah. I, I, I thought that it was because Samson kind of took over her role. She in had a the, scene where she confronted Kane face to face, like uh, on the doorstep at a house or some shit like that. And that was like her best scene in the movie. They cut it out. But the family dynamic was still there. Like Joe Beth William and Craig T. Nelson have like amazing yes. chemistry, dude. You really feel like, you know, I, I look at, at them as a couple in Poltergeist and Poltergeist too. And I'm like, that's the kind of romantic relationship I want to be in. Just it's, it's fun. It's playful. Like yeah. they, they love each other, but. You know, he's he's like he goes on that little rant, uh, like their troubles, and like, like and he loves selling vacuum yeah. cleaners. He's he he's out on the on the ground floor, and it's it's so charming. But let's be very fair here. Craig T. Fucking Nelson is coach. He's the man. Yeah. Not to date myself, but like I've always oh, liked yeah. Craig T. Nelson. Me too. Just Me too. I, I, you know, he's one of those guys that I don't want to look in. Like I don't want to know if he's an astronaut because in my heart he's like he's so cool. And I know that we're getting old now because he's from. He's an '80s and '90s guy, but dude, he he rocked, man. I mean, he might be serious, but I, in my generation, he was yeah. younger. But I mean, he he has that spark, though, because you're right. Yeah. He leads. He's funny. He has that timing, but he he could also be serious and and, and dramatic. I mean, that's I don't know. I got, I almost want to be like I I want younger kids to know about Craig T. Nelson. I, I remember when when he gets uh, he tells um, Taylor to get off his car. Yeah. He's like, get off my car. He goes up and Taylor stands up. He's yeah, fucking yeah, like four he's, feet up. And he yeah. goes, all right, all right, let's get back in the car. <laughs> I was like, I, that was I good. respect yeah. that. It's like, oh, yeah. You yeah. realize that uh, you don't have the the reach. Yeah, no, he, no he's he, amazing. And and, and they're, 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 flames. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the heart, you know, of, of, of the movie. That's why in part three, it suffered because although we had the great Tom Scarrett, don't get me wrong. Yes, here. yes. That Huge mustache. Tom Scarrett fad, you know, the stash, baby. And uh, what's your face from Robocop? And Nancy Allen. Nancy Ellen, yes. Yeah, lovely, uh, lovely woman, by the way, in real life. The same. That's good. Um, yeah, so it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same chemistry at all. I mean, really, they, they, all the charm of the of one and two because the family is missing. That's why three, yeah. I think, suffers because, and I have issues with two, but, but the mom and dad, Craig Nelson, Joe Beth Williams, and Heather are work together. Like it is like that iconic, yeah, you know, Americana family. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that, and I guess that kind of brings us to our uh, conclusion. Poltergeist 2 is a mixed bag, but it's a mixed bag that I I personally truly appreciate because, yeah, it does some things wrong. It almost feels like a, a freaking montage, like really, like the story is not really, what's the word? Fresh. I mean, it's just the same thing again. It's just they're more aware of yeah, it. It's annoying. It, it almost <laughs> feels like a bunch of scenes, you know, like put together. I'm obviously having a hard time verbalizing what I'm trying to say. The narrative is just not as tight. I guess that's the easiest way I could put it. But great acting, lots of charm, good humor, a couple of, of pretty visceral horror sequences. Julian Beck, you know, has been in my nightmares ever since next to all my exes. So there you go. And uh, Taylor's funny as fuck. So yeah, it's a mixed bag, but for me, it's an endearing mixed bag. So I have a soft spot in my heart for Poltergeist 2. 
And uh, it's a movie that. I try to revisit at least once or twice a year. And every time I watch it, I'm kind of like, I'm happy. That's it. That's the bottom line. What about you? Uh, you know, I jump back and forth. This last watch, I thought it was, it was fine. I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, I respect it a lot more than than I like it, just because I think it swings big, and I think it actually succeeds in what it wants to do. It just isn't exactly the story that I want to see. Yeah, and a lot of that's because of the fantasy elements. I, I think yeah. in a different movie, I've been down for it, but you know. Poltergeist is one of the few movies where switching the genre doesn't work for me. But I agree. I agree. But that being said, Beck as Reverend Kane is absolutely amazing. And I will always think that's one of my favorite performances, one of the favorite villains. And he's pretty low key. He's just mm -hmm. such kind of friendly. You know, yeah, see, he, he has to be let in the house, but he doesn't grab the door. I respect that. He's just asking loudly, but still kind of that like old fashioned like uh you know, I know. I, you know at the tail end and i've seen you're all gonna die i thought it was a little much but you know but he's he not that friendly that, that, he still had that sort of southern belt charm you're he all did. gonna he die did. it's like oh <laughs> okay i guess we are all gonna die that's part of the existence you know that's what we sign up for all right buddy i'll see you soon but i, I just I, I liked his vibe i liked um yeah. a lot of them, that sort of like uh water tank cloud effects the 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 mat painting shit I, I like all that stuff uh character wise you know i agree with K craig nelson uh rubenstein even if she was cut uh samson's taylor i really liked so there's a lot of like elements i like yeah. you know it just leans more fantasy than i'm into but you know what they didn't make it for me and so i am glad it exists uh coming yeah, out of the shadow of the first yeah because as we as we said and i'll, I'll finish it here I mean, you were just absolutely screwed the moment you did Poltergeist 2. So the fact yeah. that it's not a complete shit show is impressive. But I also think movies yeah. back then had a little more luck or at least a little more skill. Dude, I totally forgot until recently there was a Poltergeist remake. Silly, silly people. Oh, my God. With um, uh, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. And I love Sam Rockwell. Yeah, really yeah but do. dude, you don't. You don't. No, no. I, 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 I'll be honest. I never saw it because I'm like... I why why you're not missing why? anything you're not missing anything i mean you know statistically it's shit and i don't have enough time to be watching and also it came at the really the worst time i think of remakes you know let's be honest there was that that sort of chug fest of just get him out and i yeah, think yeah, that yeah. was at the tail end of that it could be wrong, like but one missed so. call and yeah it's just and, like uh, yeah, yeah now i'd prom I, night now or before yeah. yeah oh yes exactly it was just the the, the sort of churning the out sa shit, the so. sausage factory yeah the sausage yeah, factory, yeah. so yeah. Uh, you know, maybe there's some charm to it, but why waste my time? Uh, it sucked. It sucked ass. I, mean, I haven't seen it. it. I'll only see it for this show. I'm not going to ever see it for pleasure. I, I, I don't have enough time. Poltergeist is iconic. There's a lot of iconic movies that were remade that, you know, was like, what the fuck are you doing? There's no fucking way. Some of them hit like Evil Dead. I thought was a excellent sure, remake. Sure, but that's one of the very few ones yeah. that I think, you know. So, some of them missed like Suspiria. I know you love that shit, but what a piece of shit that was. Suspiria or well, Poltergeist as well. So it's so fucking flat. That's stupid. Yeah. I, 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 this is so random, but I just got to throw it out there because if Go. I don't, I'm going to forget to say it ever again. I am going to stick up for the house. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes. Yes. I think it's actually one of the best remakes as well. So well, it's, better, it's, it's better, better than the OG. Yes, yes. The OG. but I mean, how, how that's so fucking rare. It's like yeah. a, a league yeah. of like three, you know? That was a fluke. That was definitely a fluke. Sure, I just want to throw that out um, there so yeah. I don't forget. Cool deal. Well, look, man. Guys and dolls, haunt the comments below. Yeah, bitch. That's all I got, bro. Uh, haunt the comments. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it, Captain. She's got the blow. Haunt the comments below. Let us know. Poltergeist 2, what do you think? By the way, H.R. Geiger designs in it. Only two survived. Just wanted to say, I forgot about mentioning that. You know, Geiger did Alien and... No, oh, yeah, yeah, Geiger. He's, he's still uh... from Species and yeah. Guys and dolls, what do you think of Poltergeist 2? Overrated, underrated? Uh, have you seen it recently? Did it play out better than maybe when you initially saw it? Haunt the comment below. Yes, haunt. And uh, let us know. And you know what? I'm going to do something we never do, but I'm going to do it now. Next show, Poltergeist 3, bro. Sure. You hit. Let's go back. Let's go back home. Let's go back home to Chicago. Thank you, guys and dolls. See you next time. Poltergeist 3. Thank you.